The Glass House is rated M for a mature audience. It contains sexual references, coarse language, adult themes and material that may offend some viewers. Ahead in the Glass House. You've seen him in Parliament. You've seen him in a fighter jet. Now get your very own Peter Costello action man. Comes complete with flak jacket to protect him from his backstabbing buddies and Kevlar bum armour to make sure his ass is covered. Plus a huge pair of testicles in case he ever finds the guts to challenge Howard for the leadership. The Peter Costello action man. Testicles sold separately. Welcome to The Glass House, the program that asks the question, if Madonna is really adopting an African baby as a fashion accessory, does that mean black is the new black? <laughs> <laughs> More news than sweating blokes in Santa suits this week. For all you freedom fighters, you can now buy the latest weapon in the war on terror. It's called the Infidel's Revenge, a biro shaped like a syringe that contains pig's blood, which you squirt on suicide bombers. It also stops you chewing the end of your pen. <laughs> and including pig tissue means the pen is now meatier than the sword. <laughs> Fundamentalists believe their souls are damned if their flesh comes in contact with pig's blood at the time of their death. So if you squirt a potential bomber, they won't detonate. It's so convenient, at last you can stop lugging around that pig. <laughs> of course, while terrorists touched by pig's blood can't get into paradise, they can get into surface paradise, <laughs> where there still are 72 virgins. <laughs> but only during schoolies week. <laughs> in Italy, a satirical TV show asked 50 politicians to come in for a televised debate on the budget. But instead of giving them makeup, the pranksters wipe chemicals on the MPs' faces, which can detect drugs in sweat. Four tested positive for cocaine, 12 for cannabis. <laughs> This is why I never wear makeup on TV. <laughs> People first got suspicious when the MPs were kissing babies and the babies wanted to lick the sweat off them. <laughs> In the States, a group of universities funded by the Department of Homeland Security is developing computer software that would let Bush and his buddies monitor overseas media for negative opinions of the US. Like they need a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Bing! You've got hate mail. <laughs> The software will look for warning phrases like, I watch SBS. I like foreigners. Mmm, falafel. <laughs> the trick is getting it to read between the lines. That's W's favourite bit, because everything there is white. <laughs> Congrats! Sensory news, Willa Pathic. An Australian psychic by the name of Sharina says the shape of your bottom reveals a lot about the sort of person you are. It's the latest trend and it's called bum reading, <laughs> aka the ancient art of astrology. <laughs> it's like palm reading, except there's just one crease. <laughs> It's all about what fruit resembles your rear end. Sharina says Angelina Jolie's peach-shaped bottom indicates she loves harmony and is well-balanced with an even temper. Or it could mean she's a psycho hose monster who kidnaps African children. <laughs> the future is uncertain. <laughs> and Brad Pitt have kiwi fruit shaped bottoms which means they hold their emotions inside and suffer from coarse brown bum fluff. <laughs> and, and people with pear shaped bottoms like JLo are passionate, popular with the opposite sex and can be led into temptation. That pear will also feed a family of six for a month. <laughs> Sharina can also see the future by looking up your nose, according to the teachings of Nostradamus. <laughs> but guys, just be careful if she offers you her version of reading crystal balls. 
These people and these human rights groups having a go at the likes of Madonna because she wants to adopt an African baby. She's adopted an orphan. He's in Malawi. There's 900,000 orphans. The chance of him being adopted by anyone is very remote. The chance of him being adopted by one of the richest, most successful pop stars in the history of the world, that is like winning lotto. <laughs> Let the kid go to Madonna. in Malawi and possibly dies or he has a bloody great life. <laughs> I would go! <laughs> I want to hang out with Madonna. She's cool! <laughs> Seriously, it's ridiculous. I mean, good luck to her. I mean, my mother grew up in an orphanage. I'm sure if Elvis had wanted to adopt her, she would have said yes! <laughs> and that would have been cool because that would have meant Elvis was my grandfather! <laughs> it would have been weird, though, because she's older than Elvis! There's my point, I've made it well. All right, let's get to it. Joining me, Corinne and Dave, the throats and stones in the glass house tonight, the dazzling television smile that is Larry Emder. And our favourite therapist, Dr. Jan Hall. Movers and shakers. First up, Hollywood actress Ellen Barkin, who's auctioned off millions of dollars in jewellery her billionaire ex-husband gave her, saying she couldn't bear to wear them anymore. Remember, money can't buy you love, but it can buy you a totally wicked jet ski. <laughs> Personally, I like to take all the stuff a former lover gave me and start a sacrificial bonfire, usually under their car or their house. <laughs> it helps me get over the pain. Then again, if the gifts your ex gave you were sex toys, you might want to hold on to them in case you're single for longer than you imagined. <laughs> Corinne, men shower you with gifts. What do you do with them when the love is gone? Oh, well, I hold on to them because I think it's, it's, it's kind of a it's, a... it's a karma thing. I think if it was given with love, then it's hard to get rid of it. <laughs> and you have to keep those sex toys because it's very unhygienic to pass them on to the next person. <laughs> Even if they haven't been used, I had a, I had a, a colleague who told me about um, passing on, a friend of hers passed on a pair of those knickers that Samantha had in Sex in the City and they were little lacy things with just a string of pearls that went underneath. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the person swore they'd never been used, that only he had been the one to take them off with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> would you like a pair of those? Oh, I would think that's it sounds exciting to me, but I mean I wouldn't be wearing them though, no. would I? No. It'd be for oh. the girl to wear, yeah. Yeah, if it's just one string, then you really do have to make a decision on getting dressed. <laughs> <laughs> should burn things or um, destroy things when really there are all those starving orphans out there and sure, people absolutely. should sell them and then donate the money yeah. to charity. Or just send the sort of things you're talking about straight to the orphans <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> you should do one of those Rebecca Gibney ads. He could be a, this is little Nagudu. He mm. can't even afford sex toys. <laughs> Not for just one dollar a day. I think that most girls would keep their um, their special lingerie and be happy to wear it for the new fella. And the new fella would be happy because nah. to him it's novel. Nah. He's oh, never seen it before. I don't want lingerie that I knew was given by another guy. No. Because when you give a girl lingerie, you expect that... She's going to strut her stuff just Yes, and you, you will... Yes, yes I mean, for the want of a better term, you'll be able to christen the lingerie. <laughs> If you know what I mean. Yes, um, in way too much detail. I was lucky being a game show host many, many years ago because my uh, girlfriends, as presents, would just get crap prizes off the show that no one wanted. <laughs> really? so, so there's a couple of girls walking around Bondi with terracotta bird baths. <laughs> you know, stuff that people would win and just wouldn't come and collect. 
<laughs> you were lucky for so many reasons being a game show. So, <laughs> but the hugs that you got after the joyful women won prize. <laughs> was it, did anyone like grope too far? Because I watched a lot. Oh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched a lot of you on that show, and sometimes people would. <laughs> yeah. They grab yeah. a handful. Yeah. Oh, there, no. there, there was an elderly lady once who grabbed my left buttock, <laughs> and she was having such a good time. She got the equivalent of locked jaw in the hand. <laughs> And what, it, it was going along okay because she was a lovely lady, but at one point I lost track of her thumb. I don't know where. <laughs> I don't even. I mean, I slept. Our next mover and shaker comes from the UK, where a reality show has broadcast the first ever live birth of a baby. And it wasn't just the birth, a rival porn channel got rights to the conception. <laughs> It's a great series. Yasmin's getting knocked up. <laughs> Baby Caleb made his TV debut via Caesarean on Channel 5 last Sunday. He was immediately judged by a panel of experts who found his voice appalling <laughs> and his choice of costume in extremely poor taste. <laughs> Obstetricians were also worried about having so many people in the delivery room, especially when the father thought he clipped the umbilical cord and the sound guy got electrocuted. <laughs> Larry, you're the TV host with the most. Would you tell a baby to come on down? <laughs> Absolutely. I love this idea. Except, of course, it would have to be a game show. I don't know, maybe Womb of Fortune. I don't know. <laughs> oh, how, about a, how about changing wombs? <laughs> that would be good. There's a huge dilemma here. The huge, huge ethical dilemma. When do you take a commercial break? Mm. <laughs> That's the big question. Is it after that? Is it, it'd have to be before the genitals, wouldn't it? We'll be back after this break to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it would have to in Australia it would be hosted by Andrew O'Keefe, wouldn't it? Yeah. We'll, we'll be back after the break. Penis or no penis? <laughs> <laughs> how, how's that kid gonna feel when he grows up, you know, and they have the family videos and his worldwide television, his birth yeah. being born? And He's nude. It, what if it was a natural birth, though, and there's his mother's pink bits all there, too? Well, I, mean, I think you'll find the technical term for that, Dr. Jan, is wadge. <laughs> but it's natural. It's natural, Jan. I mean, all women have them, and, you know, it's just... It's a beautiful part of life. I mean... <laughs> Hey, Larry, you went, you went over to MIP, didn't you, which is... Uh, what is MIP? Yeah. It's, a, it's a big TV trade show. It's just thousands and thousands of stands. Yes. But there's these amazing mm -hmm. programs that you can buy. Of course, all the, this is where all the big deals are done. Mm -hmm. So all the big um, networks buy the big TV formats. But down in the basement, in the bunker, there's these incredible TV shows that you'll never see on air. And there was one I brought for you. Can I show it to you? Yeah, of course. I, I knew you'd want to see this. Hang on, I've got it here. This was the best one I could find for you. And this is called Love Me, Love My Doll. Right? Mm. Now, this is about guys who have real uh, dolls, like lifelike dolls made. It costs about 15 grand. Yeah. And they drive them around, they live with them, they take them to <laughs> restaurants. And what, what happens? <laughs> this guy, this guy, one of the stars of this show, this is serious, one of the, one of the uh, dolls broke a hip. Now, I don't know how a, a doll does that. <laughs> But this show talks He's about... He's probably got osteoporosis, yeah. yeah. <laughs> talks about how he sat next to the doll maker and wept for three hours while the doll maker put it back yeah. together. This is the sort of quality stuff you can how many episodes? to see shortly. How many episodes? Uh, I, well, there's only one one hour, but... Um, right. Oh, that's surely this. not I, enough. I, I did not... <laughs> that's I did not, not enough, to, do you? I'm oh, just getting to know the characters after <laughs> one hour. <laughs> But I, I, it started out quite badly for me because we landed in KL on the way over. And, uh, you know, they make the announcement as you're landing saying uh, the death penalty in KL for drugs. Mm. So we get off there and I, I was doing Wheel of Fortune this year mm. and I'm walking through the airport and some idiot Aussie from the other, other end of immigration yells out, Hey, Larry, I want to buy an E! <laughs> so, oh, so... Oh, no. There I am. <laughs> there I am in KL thinking... I'm screwed here. <laughs> but still but looking yeah. happy. But still <laughs> <laughs> Our favourite movers and shakers come from India, where the Catholic Church reckons call centres have become hotbeds of sin, with staff flirting, fondling, even getting each other pregnant. Now I know why they use hands-free phones. <laughs> These days it could be the call centre who can't talk because they're eating. <laughs> The church is so concerned it wants to turn the staff away from sin by taking them on spiritual retreats. 
Yeah, I don't think they've thought this through. They're fornicating at the call centre, so let's take them on a secluded retreat. <laughs> That'll work. Dr Jan, you like a good reverse charges. Why are the call centre kids... <laughs> why are the call centre kids so horny? Well, we know that in India their upbringing really does um, restrain them a lot, so that they're going into this um, bright sort of place at night. You know, your biorhythms change at night. You know, you get sort of a lot more easily right? excitable. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um... Sorry, I can blame her because when I, I'm with Holly, my fiance, it's my biorhythms. It's your biorhythms. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to keep a call centre, you know, excited, you know, you have to inject it with some kind of enthusiasm. So... I think know, they're injecting yeah, more I, than enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, I worked at a call centre once. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, you worked at a call centre? I did. I was for what sort of company? Oh, like, for what sort of product? Oh, the Wheelchair Sports Association, and I um, wanted people to donate to them. And no one really did. Um, <laughs> but I would just go, yeah, can you donate? And they go, no. <laughs> so I remember the boss actually said, you need to rev it up. And so I rang up and said, can you donate? And they said, no. I said, go on! <laughs> but I did. There was no, there was no action there. See, I reckon they've got this all wrong. You know how they call us and we get pissed off? And if, yeah. if we knew, if Australians knew that somewhere in India there was a call centre <laughs> with 500 naked people doing it, we'd call them. <laughs> and, and we'd happily pay $3.99 a minute to call them. What do you think about the idea of phone sex, Dr Jan? Oh, I think lots of people do it. I mean, it's, it's a real turn-on. What for... do you think of the price? Mm. Expensive? <laughs> Some very sad people who get addicted to phone mm, sex, yeah. and they uh, probably doing the dolls as well. <laughs> but <laughs> as long as they can take wickets, we still love them. <laughs> <laughs> and normal people have normal phone sex, and it's a lot of fun. And I recommend that people should get in the habit of calling their loved one just before they go home from work, and they say, you know, honey, what are you wearing? And yeah. this is what I'd like you to be wearing. Why not? Really? Mm. On the way home? Not, not in the car, though. Unless you've got a hands free. See, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See I, I did that on the train once. I got arrested. <laughs> no police are holding you, meaning to come on down. <laughs> If people are a bit uncomfortable about talking dirty, yeah. they, yeah, can, yeah. they can talk earthy instead. What, right. like, What's that what, mean? Well, earthy is not so dirty as dirty. All right. Like what? Give us an example, Dr. Jan. Like, pretend that I'm your man and um, <laughs> you're on the phone to me. Hi, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd probably say something like, oh, Dave, we'll say, your no voice probably, really yeah. does it for me. <laughs> It's so gravelly. It reminds me of my last rash. <laughs> Later in the glass house, John Howard hints at the number of times he was given a wedgie at school. It is a, uh, an unbelievably large number. <laughs> Leighton Hewitt tries to get a threesome happening with Brad and Angelina. Yeah, I can have a good crack at it and, and obviously finish in the top couple in the world. And a schoolboy asks the treasurer to buy him a beer but gets distracted by the size of his boobs. Cougar! <laughs> Tonight's question on the glass house is what's the worst thing that ever happened to you playing sport? Let's find some answers. All right, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you playing sport? Um, we were at a family function and we were playing soccer and I kicked it right into the goalie's nuts. <laughs> and he was an old guy as well. He wasn't, you know, young or anything. Right, he was so really he's... old and he was ready to yeah. pick up the ball so right off the... probably <laughs> 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 Worst thing that ever happened to you playing sport? Um, falling on my ass playing soccer. I was taking a penalty shot and I... Oh, you're... Oh, yeah. right. Did you actually kick the ball? You missed the ball completely. <laughs> What's the worst thing you have when you playing sport? When I was a child, I was playing cricket, got hit in the box. The only problem was I was late to cricket and I didn't wear a box. You got a cricket ball in the box area without a box. Luckily, oh. I was young. Target area wasn't as big, yeah? It wasn't too bad. <laughs> so, but, uh, so even you were able to grow after that incident? <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's okay now? He's fine. There's no scarring down there? There's been a recovery. Um, being in the office at work when the guys are playing fart cricket. I'm playing fight cricket. No, fart cricket. A fart cricket. Well, if you manage to get a comment, you get two runs. If it lingers, you get four runs. And if you clear the room, you get six. Busted collarbone. What were you playing? Football. But did you... Because you go hard, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Have you watched him? Does he go hard? Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> She's a bit embarrassed about being on television. And saying that you go hard. Yeah. Very hard. <laughs> In a cruel news for cricket fans, a British newspaper claimed recently that Al-Qaeda plotted to kill the Australian and English teams during last year's Ashes series, but a cricket-loving terrorist managed to get the plan changed. So if the terrorists love cricket so much and hate us so much, why don't we settle it on the field? They could call it the end of the world series cricket. <laughs> and they'd play for the Ashes, or whichever country loses. <laughs> Playing Al Qaeda at cricket would be great, but be warned if you're talking, a Sama doll starts ticking and asking for nachos, for God's sake, give it nachos. <laughs> Here is he. I'd like your help. Sure. I want you to be the captain of the Al Qaeda cricket team. <laughs> First sure. question, Dave Larden. Yeah. How do you think you'll go against Australia? Oh, I think we'll uh, uh, blow them away. <laughs> when you uh, when you rub your balls and you get that red mark on your pants, how do you get that out? Uh, you, um, uh, I, I, I get a goat to lick it off. Oh. <laughs> Do you wear a box around that private part to um, protect yourself from injury? Ah, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, because I might be a terrorist and be nuts, <laughs> but I'm not mental. <laughs> Wondering if you'd be kind enough to uh, to sing your theme song for us. Yes, uh, we are the old Kaida <laughs> team. We love to blow up. <laughs> We'll always blow up. <laughs> One for blow up, blow up for all. I think you get the picture. <laughs> Alan Boyd is getting this, this beach cricket thing going in Australia. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I'm right into that. Be bikini clad girls all over the place, wouldn't there? Well, hang on, aren't you devoutly Muslim? No. Oh, yeah. It's not my fault if they're just there, is it? <laughs> What's your policy on having sex addicts on your team? Uh, we are very, very religious. <laughs> Don't believe in sex outside marriage. So if we've got sex addicts on the team, we keep it quiet. <laughs> Well, who's your most feared opponent? Ah, uh, Warney, yeah. Why's that? Because uh, he's not scared of any bush. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, sorry. Warney just asked me to ask you too, you know that whole martyrdom thing where you, you die and you get 72 virgins. He just wanted to know how that works. Uh, well, the problem with Warney is that he's uh, going through most of them and we're not having, we haven't got enough virgins left. <laughs> Are you a sledger? Like, I mean, that, do your uh, team sledge? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we sledge pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah what we'll sort of sledges? Yeah. Oh, uh, I would say to you, I'd say, uh, my sister's more a virgin than your sister. <laughs> <laughs> more a virgin? More a virgin, the, yeah. What, there are different stages of virginity, are there? Yeah, there are, yeah. Really? I'm intrigued. What, what, I'm wondering whether I still might have a stage of virginity <laughs> left. I don't think you have any stages left. <laughs> Well, that's the way it is for Wednesday, October the 25th. Thank you, Dr Jan. Thank, Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Don't forget our last show of the year on November 29th will be the Glass House Awards for Excellence, which we want you to vote for. But, Larry, seeing you here, mm. could I get you to read the nominees? Yes, you can, but it will cost you extra. <laughs> <laughs>
This week, outstanding excellence in the field of science, and the nominees are Boffins from Manchester Metropolitan University, who found mice don't actually like cheese. <laughs> the Dutch company, which has developed a condom to protect your mobile phone from water and other substances, it can also be used as a regular condom. <laughs> After you take the other things out of it, I suppose. <laughs> IVF experts in Israel who've doubled pregnancy rates by implanting the embryo, then entertaining patients with a clown. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Imagine Ronald McDonald in there. <laughs> and, and New Zealand's finest son, Clinton Cozy, for inventing this. <laughs> ABC or D to 19747747 or go to abc.net.au slash glasshouse. A new award next week, so vote, 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 my pretties. <laughs> and let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines. According to the Canberra Times, Beaconsfield Miners release book. Spends 10 days trapped in bargain bin. <laughs> in the Hobart Mercury, Howard links drought to global warming. And pretty sure obesity is due to eating lots. <laughs> And Le Monde has Paul McCartney not worried by cruelty claims. Heather hasn't got a leg to stand on. <laughs> Good night. If you're in Sydney and would like to be part of an entertaining, fun-filled night out, then join the studio audience for the Glass House. Call 02 9380 6177 during business hours. That's 02 9380 6177.